Hello everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be looking at a viewer question, and that question asks, What's up with all the footprint layers? In your PCB footprint, you will find multiple layers corresponding to layers in your PCB layout that you will see in the PCB editor. Our viewer question asks which layers are absolutely necessary, which ones to create in pairs, and things like that. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. Make sure to hop into Altium Designer and follow along. So before we get started, let's take a look at that viewer question. Mr. Yu writes, I am trying to learn Altium and have a confusion. When we create a PCB footprint, what extra layers do we need to add ourselves? 3D body, assembly drawing, courtyard, and any other? When I use the wizard inside Altium, they create these mechanical layers, but only as single layers. However, when I look on the internet, I see that people create layer pairs for these things and not single layers. It is all very confusing. So I think if you're still learning Altium Designer or you're learning PCB design software in general, this is a point of confusion. If you look inside of a footprint editor and the PCB editor, you will see a lot of different layers and it's natural to ask who needs what layers as well as what layers need to contain information in the footprints versus in the PCB layout. Let's look at the essential minimum number of layers that you need to specify in the footprint in order to have a basic functional footprint. The first layers are of course your copper layers. Your copper layers contain your pads, if it's an SMD component. Uh, if it's a through hole component, it will contain holes, which are generally just pads with a hole defined. It could contain other copper features like maybe some fills. You could have larger pads like a die attached pad for an integrated circuit. In general, the copper is of course the first layer and the most important layer because this is what's gonna be used to make real connections in your PCB layout. The next important layers are paste mask layers. So the paste mask layers define where solder paste is deposited so that components can be assembled onto a PCB. The paste mask layers are defined automatically, which is why I put it on this side of the board. They're defined through a design rule inside of the PCB editor and in Altium that's in the PCB rules and constraints editor when you're inside of the PCB editor window and you have a PCB open. The next important uh, layer pair is your solder mask layers. Now the solder mask layer defines the solder mask opening around the copper. And of course you need to have that copper exposed so that you can mount the component onto that copper. And then you need to have another opening for the paste mask on top of that, which then defines where the solder paste is deposited on that copper. Now the solder mask opening is also defined automatically, which is why I put it on this side of the board. It's defined automatically through a design rule. Now you can set a value manually inside your footprints when you're creating the footprint. However, the design rule can override that when you're actually working on the PCB layout. And then the next minimum amount of layers that you need is a silk screen layer. And at minimum, you just need to have the reference designator in your silk screen layer. You're not required necessarily to have component outlines, but at minimum you need to have a reference designator. And if it's a polarized component like a diode or a polarized capacitor, you should also have a polarity marking. And if it's an integrated circuit, more than two pins, it should have, of course, a pin one marking. So this is the minimum amount of stuff that you need to have in your footprints in order to make them functional in a PCB layout. It's the minimum amount of stuff. What else do you need to have to have a industry standard footprint? Well, of course, if you look in the PCB editor or in a footprint editor, there are many more layers than that. So I think the best way to explain the functions of those layers and what information is contained in those layers, let's take a look at some example footprints and we'll go through and see how all those different layers work. So let's take a look at an example footprint in one of the project libraries I have here in Altium Designer, and we can see some of those other required layers, or maybe not required, but good to have layers that you should include in a PCB footprint. So here, this is just the first component that comes up, but we can see some of the other layers that are good to have in a footprint just from looking at this image. So first, I'm gonna make sure I enable all of the relevant layers. 
and then we'll go ahead and turn on single layer mode and we can cycle through these. So of course we have the top and bottom copper. Obviously in this one there is no bottom copper because this is of course a surface mount component in a small BGA package, you can see that here. The next one that we have is a 3D body. Now the 3D body has to be created manually and this is not required, but if you want your component to have a 3D view associated with it like this, then of course you need to find a 3D body, you need to create a simple 3D body. If the manufacturer provides a step file for this, then you can use that, or you can create one in SOLIDWORKS. 3D body is of course always useful if you're gonna do 3D placement. We also have a bottom 3D body layer. Now here you can see that there's nothing in that layer, and of course if I put this into 3D and then spin it around, you can see the pads on the bottom of the balls on this package and there's nothing below those pads. So of course there would be nothing on the bottom 3D body layer. Next we have some mechanical layers and assembly layers and then we have a courtyard layer. So mechanical layers can really vary depending on what the component is. You could include things like routing slots if you want. There are two mechanical layers here that you can see. One of them is actually mechanical three, which is a board shape layer. Now here, the assembly layer. This is very important if you're going to produce an assembly drawing. Now again, not required for a minimum viable footprint, but still useful. Now generally, if you have a top 3D body, you should also have a top assembly. If you have a bottom 3D body, you should also have a bottom assembly. So notice that these two are both blank. And again, if there will be part of that component extending to the bottom side of the board, it's kind of rare, but it does exist, then you would want to populate both of these layers, and then you would be creating the 3D body layers in pairs and the assembly layers in pairs. So the assembly layer appears in an assembly drawing, and I'll show an example of how that populates here later. Next, the courtyard layer. So the courtyard layer is important. It is built based on the density level of components that you're going to put into the board. So when I say the density level, you can actually get a sense for what that means just by looking at the size of this package, which is defined here in the 3D body layer, and that's what I have selected in this view, against the size of the courtyard. So this courtyard is very large, and basically what this courtyard is doing is it's telling the designer how much room to leave around this component between other components. So if I have another component and I bring it into the PCB layout next to this component, the courtyard regions should not overlap with each other. Now, courtyards are created based on density levels. And if I just do a quick measure from the component body edge to this end of this courtyard layer, we can see that we basically have a one millimeter courtyard excess around this component. Is that required? Is it not required? Can we make that smaller? You can actually make that smaller if you want, and if you're going to be complying with one of the IPC density levels regarding component placement. So courtyards can be smaller, and in fact, you could have three different footprints for the same component, each with different courtyards, corresponding to the different density levels. So take a look at the blog in the description. That blog contains a rundown of the density levels and specific numbers for those density levels that are used to define these courtyard outlines. Now there's also a bottom courtyard layer. Once again, if we have anything on the bottom assembly and the bottom 3D body and even pads on the bottom, we would also want to define a bottom courtyard layer. So you'll notice that all of these bottom layers are blank only because there's no component information for this particular component on the bottom layer. Next, we have some overlay layers, and these are better known as the silk screen layer. And of course, if I put this into single layer mode, you can see very clearly that we have a open box component outline with a pin one indicator in our overlay layer. And once again, we have nothing on the bottom overlay. So the only reason that we don't have anything on the bottom overlay is just because there is no component data to put on the bottom layer, and we don't need anything on this bottom overlay. Those are the nice to have or important to have layers in your PCB footprints. Now, things like courtyard aren't necessarily required, but they are a useful tool for the designer. 
and they can be used as guides for how close you should place your component. But I will admit it's a bit of a pain to create all of these different courtyards and all these different outlines for every single component multiple times over. I think it's a lot easier to use the design rules regarding spacing between components in order to prevent uh, excessively high density and difficulty in assembly. Now, one thing that you can do is you can actually set all of these silkscreen outlines to coincide with your courtyard if you want. And you'll actually see this quite often on resistors. So just as an example, if we look at something like this polarized capacitor, you're not gonna see the courtyard here in this one. But if we look at, let's say, some of these other capacitors, you'll see here that this would be a high density capacitor. So you're intending to use this for very high densities. And this silkscreen outline just happens to coincide with the courtyard boundary. So if we had two of these components, we put them side by side, we can get them only so close as their silkscreen outlines overlap each other, say along this edge or maybe along this edge. Now that's gonna trigger a design rule error in your PCB editor. So when you're doing the layout and you do overlap these silkscreen lines, you are gonna trigger a design rule error. However, you can just ignore it if you want. Now it's okay if two of your silk screen lines overlap like this, even though it does produce a design rule error. And the reason for that is because in this particular case for these passives, when these silk screen lines overlap, you're just placing them close enough to where they still satisfy your density level limit. And of course, when you're doing silk screen printing, it's okay if these lines overlap. The fabricator is just gonna see a single silk screen element that does consist of overlapping components, but the silkscreen deposition tools don't know that. They can certainly deposit this kind of continuous ring of silkscreen across multiple components without any problems. Now, the last important type of layer that you may need to include in some components is a keep out layer. Keep out layers are not required for every component but they are useful. So for example, some connectors will need to have a keep out layer. And the reason for that is because if you look between the pads on the connector, there could be space to route some traces or place components, just if you look at the 2D space. However, you don't want to put components or traces there because that's where you need to mount the component onto the PCB. So the keep out layers are very useful for that reason. So just as an example, let me kind of zoom in here. Let's take a look at an example component that has a keep out layer in it just to see what that looks like. So if I just right click and place from the manufacturer part search panel, place this guy here, and then we can turn off single layer mode and we can see what this keep out looks like. So the keep out region is this region right here in this pink hatched box. This region is essentially telling you that you should not put any components in this area or route any traces in this area. If you put this into 3D, you can pretty clearly see that obviously this is a solid body connector if I just kind of rotate this around, you can see that it has some thickness to it. The component collision rule is gonna be able to handle placement of any components within the body of this connector and it'll trigger a design rule error. And that's exactly what you want with a component collision rule. But these keep outs are very important because they can tell you also to not put any copper in this area. So if you had any copper fill that was overlapping all of this, the keep out would prevent it from filling there. When you're inside of a PCB footprint, you'll see here on the right hand panel that there is a keep out layer option. And if we just kind of you know scroll over here on the bottom panel, if I just select keep out layer, put this thing into single layer mode, we can't see that keep out layer anymore because there's nothing in the keep out layer for this particular component. These are all of the important layers that you need. And I think the takeaway here for Mr. Yu's question is that sometimes they are defined in pairs. Like for example, this pad here or this hole, this is defined in terms of layer pairs. Whereas other important layers in the PCB footprint are not necessarily defined in pairs. We saw some examples here when we looked at this other component in the library, these assembly layers and the 3D body layer, there may not be any information to put on the bottom layer. If there's no information to put on this bottom layer, you can of course leave, such as this bottom assembly layer and the bottom courtyard layer, leave those layers blank. Now, I mentioned earlier, this assembly data it gets ported over to a assembly drawing. So what happens if I open up this assembly drawing and take a look? Well, what Altium Designer does in the Draftsman tool is it actually uses the 3D body information and projects it 
into an assembly layer and it uses your assembly outline with the designator in order to create component outlines in an assembly drawing. So I have an example here, and if I zoom in, you can just see some of the major components that have data in the assembly layers. So here we've got a SIM card. Here you can see we've got a Quectel module in this particular board. We've got some connectors. All of this data for these different components is being imported from the top texture in that 3D body, and it's being projected into the assembly layer. So if you actually look up the component that I have in this library, we didn't write out all of this BG95 and then all of these other you know, serial numbers and IMEI numbers and so on and so forth. All we had was basically just this outline here that you see around the outside of this component. Altium Designer imports that information automatically. Now you could, of course, go over to, let's say, the PCB doc, and I could go to file and export, and I could export a DXF or a DWG for use in an external drawing program to then create an assembly drawing like this. However, if I just go to export DFX DWG, it's just gonna export all of the layers individually. So let's just say I hit save here. When I open up this dialog after hitting save, I have the option to export all of the layers if I want to, or I can narrow down to specific layers, including these 3D body layers. And that's what's gonna allow me to then extract all of that information and put it into an assembly drawing if I wanna use an external program. Personally, of course, you guys should know that I like the Draftsman tool. The Draftsman tool does all of this stuff automatically. So that way I don't need to worry about that kind of export and then compiling it back into like a DWG file in AutoCAD or in another drafting tool. Now, I think the final question that often comes up when looking at all of the different layers that are in a typical footprint is this, which of these layers do you need to give to your fabricator or your assembler in order to manufacture the board? I'm a believer that you should just export everything and then you can let them figure it out. And fabricators are easily able to figure it out. They know which layers they need. And as long as the layers are named properly, or as long as they use the correct extension, your fabricator will be able to tell the difference. Also, what you can do is if you go into your PCB layout, you can see that you can actually add information to the various layers directly in the PCB layout. And so then when this top layer, for example, gets exported as a Gerber, there will be this text inside of that Gerber that says top layer. So when your fabricator is going through and looking at your Gerber data or at your ODB data, they're going to be able to see very clearly that this is indeed for the top layer. And you can do the same for all of the other layers, including, for example, your overlay and, for example, your solder and your assembly layers and all of the other layers. So keep that in mind. That's going to ensure that they're able to figure out which layers they need. And like I said, I'm a fan of just exporting all of it and letting them figure it out. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Whether you're a new designer or you've been designing for decades, we always love getting your questions and comments. So leave your comments and questions in the comments section. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.